Hello everyone. So today in this video, we are going to continue from task two of this project, zero by zero, BC, malloc and free. So this task here says we should write a function that concatenates two strings. What is concatenation? I've explained concatenation when we're talking about pointers is simply adding one set of characters or one set of string to another string, right? For instance, if, I am, if I'm asked to concatenate Alex and engineering, for instance, at the end, I'm going to have Alex engineering. That's the result. Assuming the parameter S1 is Alex and the parameter S2 is engineering. So I'm, if I'm to concatenate at the end, I'm going to get Alex engineering. That's, that will be the result. So that's simply what concatenation is. Okay. So the return pointer should point to a newly allocated space in memory, which contains the content of S1 followed by the content of S2 and not terminated. So take note of this. In the new list piece that we need to allocate to our program, it should what contain the content of S1, right? And also what the content of S2. So it means we need to know the length of S1 and the length of S2, right? For us to be able to ask malloc to allocate the exact memory we need to store element of S1 or content of S1 and that of S2. And also we need to add an extra byte of memory for what? For the null terminated string. Do you get it? So if null is passed, treat it as an empty string. The function should return null on failure. So it means that if S1 here or S2, because it says if null is passed, so it can be either S1 or S2. If any one of them is null, we are going to treat it as an empty string. So let's see how to solve this problem. So before we continue, let me quickly pass this information. For those interested in our C mentorship program, the course application for the seventh batch is currently open. So kindly go to bitweblearn.com.ng, which is our newly launched learning management system, and then go to courses. Under courses, you'll be able to see ALX Complete C Programming course. So because I'm already logged in, that's why I'm seeing continue learning here. In your own case, you will see start learning. Okay, so if I click on continue learning now, so as you can see, I have the project here. These are the first ones created, how to clear repositories, Hello world, how to install Betty, all this. These are all the ALX project as you can see here. We have them on this website. Okay, so for instance, if I want to access this small functions, more nested loops, I will just click on this. And as you can see, all the materials are here. Okay, so here as well, if I want to access functions and nested loops, all the course materials are here. So if you're really interested in taking part in this mentorship program, kindly message me using the WhatsApp link in the description of this video and then I will share a coupon code which will give you a 30% discount on this course. Believe me, this course is very affordable, okay? Also, if you have a course that you want to sell on this website, you can register as an instructor. Simply come here and then you can click on instructor registration. You can register as an instructor because I've already registered. That's why you're seeing you are not registered as an instructor. In your own case, you'll see a registration form which you need to fill. Okay, so after filling the registration form and after uploading your course, the course will be reviewed. And once everything is fine, we are going to make it available for others to have access to. Okay, so if there is any inquiry you want about being an instructor or enrolling in the C programming course, kindly message me, like I said, using the WhatsApp link in the description of this video, and I will answer your question. And also, I will share the coupon code that you need to get 30% discount on our mentorship program. So thank you very much, and let's continue. Let me copy this. So this is going to be VI, paste this here. So as you can see, I have my Betty documented to avoid time wastage. So let's begin writing the function. So like I said, we need to find the length of S1 and that of S2, right? So I'm going to declare a variable to find the length of S1 or to hold the length of S1. So let me call it S1 length and I'm going to initialize it to zero. And also that of S2, I will declare it as S2 length and it's going to hold zero. So I'm going to need a loop. So I need to create a variable in which I'm going to use for my looping. And lastly, I need to declare a variable that will hold what, sorry, a pointer that will hold what return value of malloc. So let me call it, um, let me just call it output, for instance. Okay. So what do I need to do first? I need to pass in this condition. It says if none is passed, treat it as an empty string. So I need to say if S1, right, if S1 is equals to null, right, we are going to treat it as an empty string. So if S1 is equals to null, I will just say S1 equals to and then i will just 
create uh, write two double quotes here so this is going to treat it as an empty string because there is nothing within the double quotes right so it's empty so same applies to s2 i'll say if s2 also is equals to null it's also going to treat it as an empty string so s2 is equals to this so i'm done checking for this condition so the next thing i need to do is to find the lengths of this s1 and also s2 so i'll say for i this is why when we're talking about pointers i said you need to know how to find the length of a string okay because we'll be using it throughout so s index i not equals to the terminating non byte then i plus plus so here i'm trying to find the length of s1 so here i'll just say s1 length plus plus so i'll increment the value of s1 length to one right from zero one so that's how it will keep going so same applies to that of s2 i need to find the length so it's going to be for i equals to zero as well but in this case it's going to be sorry here it's supposed to be s1 not s so here it's going to be s2 index i not equals to the terminating no byte then i plus plus so here as well i will just say s2 len plus plus all right so i'm done writing the function to find the length of the string so the next thing we need to do is to allocate the memory right so i've already created an array or sorry a pointer that will hold the return value of malloc which is output so i'll just say output is equals to i will now call my malloc and say malloc i want you to allocate size of what am i storing it's a character right it's going to be car right times what times what it's going to be what the length of s1 plus the length of s2 right because we need a space to store exact character of s1 and also exact character of s2 so it's going to be the length of s1 plus the length of s2 is the space we need right so i just say s1 len plus s2 len these are the variables that are holding the length of these strings s1 and s2 right so here this is going to only allocate space for s1 len and s2 len right we don't have space for our null byte right and as you can see here it says a null terminated so we need to provide an extra byte of memory for null byte right so i just say plus one here so it's going to allocate an extra byte of memory in which we'll be able to add our null byte do you get it so the next thing we need to do is to check if malloc fails right so i just say if output is equals to null sorry this should be no yeah if output is equal to null, what should we do? We are going to return a null that is malloc field, right? So what's the next thing we need to do? The next thing we need to do is we need to begin storing the characters of S1 inside our output. Isn't it? That's the first thing I'm going to do now. I'm going to copy the exact content of S1 inside my output, right? So I now say for i equals to zero, right? So I'm looping over S1 entirely, right? So I'll just say S1i not equals to the terminating null byte, then I plus plus, right? So here, what do I need to do? I'm copying the exact content of S1 to where? To output here, right? So I'll just say output, right? Index i is equals to what? S1 index i. So what this is going to do is whatever we have at S1 index i will be stored at output index i right so for i equals to zero it means s1 is equals to zero so it's going to copy the content of s1 index zero and paste it in where output index zero so this way we'll have the exact content of s1 stored at exact location at the same index in output here so now i have the content of s1 stored in output so the next loop i'm going to need here is a loop that will iterate over s2 and store the content of s2 inside output right because i need to have the concatenated string inside this output right so i'll just say for i equals to zero as well equals to zero so this is going to be s2 index i not equals to the terminating null byte right then i plus plus right so what do we need to do here so there is something you need to take note here right here if i'm to copy the content of s2 right I need to take note of where I'm copying it to inside my output. Because when you look at this, let me explain this. Assuming my S1, my S1 here is something like this. ALX, right? And my S2 is something like this. Happy. Happy like this. 
it's just an assumption so my output here the first loop i created on the code is simply going to loop over this right over s1 alx and i'm going to have a l and x right so it is index 0 index 1 index 2 right so now the next loop is going to loop over this s2 string right so i need to take note of where i am going to begin copying the string or the characters of s2 to my output so the index 0 1 and 2 have been occupied already so it means if i'm to begin copying the content of s2 to my output i need to begin from where index 3 right so and how will i know i'm supposed to begin from index 3 it means i need to find the length of what of s1 right and we've already found the length of s1 isn't it so the next thing i'm going to do here is i can simply tell my for loop to begin appending or to begin copying or storing the content of s2 inside where inside my out is going to be outputs like this right index what s1 len and we've seen why we use s1 len right because if we don't know the length of s1 we will not know from which index we need to begin copying the content of s2 right here the length of s1 is 3 so it means i want to begin iterating from index 3 if the length of s1 assuming we have u here alx u here so it means we have what 3 here right so here the length of x1 is 4 right so it means i want to begin from index 4 i want to begin copying the content of s2 from index 4 so my h will be here a p p y did you see that so i need to find the length of s1 which we've done that already right we've already found the length of s1 so if i leave it like this as well it's not going to work up to the end of the loop so we need to make some adjustment but before that let's just write this so what i'm going to do here is i will just say output right s1 length right i've already explained that is equals to what is equals to s2 index i right so it's going to begin copying the content of s2 and placing it from which index of output s1 line so like i said if i leave it like this it is going to work for the first iteration only i is cost to zero so it's going to copy s2 index zero to what to s1 line which position is s1 line this character here sorry this index index four right so if my iteration moves to one now i equals to one so it's going to copy s2 index one to where output s1 line so it is still going to overwrite the content of index four because index four here is still my what my s1 line so how can i get it to move from one index to another so i need to add what plus i here so as the iteration increase the index will also be increasing right so if my i is one now i'm copying whatever is in what is in s2 index 1 toward s1 len plus what plus 1 right so here the length of s1 is what is 4 so it's going to append in what 4 plus 1 which is what which is 5 this is index 5 right so it's going to have a appended in what in index 5 right so if my iteration moved to 2 now i have s1 len plus what plus 2 so s1 len is 4 initially plus 2 is 6 so it's going to begin appending from index 6 or let me say it's going to copy whatever is in s2 index 2 to what to output s1 len plus i which is index 6 of output do you get it so all i'm going to add here is simply plus i here that's all okay so the next thing i need to do is simply return my function that's what the question says so we are going to return a pointer to the output in which we created the new limb space which is called output so that's all that's all we need to do about this task here so let's save and exit and let's run betty on this so this is going to be betty which task is this task two right so two yeah betty is fine so let's create the test file let's copy this copy so as you can see here also the function has been freed so that's why i'm not adding the free function right so here i need to create two main.c right so paste this all right so let's compile our program and let's see the output so copy sorry copy and then i'm going to paste this here all right so as you can see it has been compiled so let's run the compiled file all right, so as you can see, we got the exact output, which is what? Which is Betty Holberton, right? So in their own case here, they are having a dollar sign at the end, and that is because they pass in this function here, cat e, right? So let me just do something like this. 
So did you see that? We are having the dollar sign appended at the end of our string as well. Do you get it? So this is simply how to do this. Okay, I believe this is clear, right? This is clear. So this is what was passed to the function Betty, and this is the second parameter Holberton. So at the end, we got what the concatenated string, which is Betty Holberton. That's why we're having Betty Holberton here. Do you get it? So that's simply how to do this, okay? So don't forget to add, commit, and push to your GitHub, and then you can run your checks. So in the next video, we are going to continue from task three of this project. So thank you very much. Till we meet in our next session.